In this first demonstration, the inside of the test lung is currently being ventilated with a pressure control level of 10 centimeters of water and a PEEP level of 6 centimeters of water. The outside of the lung, or the pleural space that it represents, is being pressurized with a CPAP unit with a pressure of 6 centimeters of water. Because the pressure outside of the lung in the pleural space is equal to the pressure inside the lung at end exhalation, which is the PEEP level, I have a transpulmonary pressure of 0. If I elevate the pleural pressures, let's say to 12, watch what happens to the lung during exhalation. Now my transpulmonary pressure is negative 6 centimeters of water because the pressure inside my lung remains at 6 centimeters of water of PEEP and the pressure outside is 12. To correct this collapse, I must increase my PEEP to match the pressure outside of my lung again. As you can see, now that I've increased my PEEP to 12, the lung is staying inflated at end of exhalation. I will now increase the pressure outside of the lung to 20 centimeters of water. Notice again how quickly the lung collapses at end of exhalation. Currently the pressure inside my lung is 12 centimeters of water, which is my PEEP level, and the pressure outside is 20. I will now increase the PEEP to 20 centimeters of water. If you recall the look of the test lung at all other PEEP levels, you will notice whether the PEEP was 6, 12, or now 20, the PEEP level doesn't seem to make much difference in terms of how the lung looks, so long as it equals the pressure outside of the lung, giving you a transpulmonary pressure of 0. For my last scenario, observe the lung when my PEEP is set to 20 centimeters of water inside my lung, and my pleural pressure outside the lung is low, at 6 centimeters of water. The lung is now very over distended. This would result in poor lung compliance, most likely poor gas exchange, lung damage, and potential hemodynamic instability.